Invasive weeds such as Japanese knotweed pose risks to the environment, water industry and transport infrastructure. They are growing in number and the legislation surrounding their control is becoming more complicated. Working with the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, RICS, supported by the Council of Mortgage Lenders and the Building Societies Association, the Property Care Association set up the Invasive Weed Control Group in 2012. Over the years, the group has provided a membership with the expertise to control and manage invasive species, offering high levels of technical knowledge and practical skills. The group's experience and best practice approach has seen it go from strength to strength. As a result, it is well placed to deal with the challenges ahead, offering a level-headed, coordinated and effective means to control invasive weeds across the UK. The group has a really important role to play in um, formulating strategies, best practice, bringing people together um, to provide um, really solid solutions for the control and eradication of non-native invasives in the UK. Without the section um, there wouldn't be cohesion, there wouldn't be collective policy on how to manage and control these plants. For a long time the government has placed a responsibility on landowners to deal with these invasive plants uh, that might occur on their land. Initially this was just two or three plants, in fact it was Japanese knotweed and giant hogweed and a, and a seaweed. But recently, over the last few years, the number has increased significantly and uh, we're now looking at a list that's in the order of about 50 different types of, of plants. These plants can cause a, a, a wide range of problems. In their very name, they're invasive and therefore uh, will displace the native plants. So from an environmental point of view, they're very undesirable. They also cause problems along rivers and drainage ditches, drainage functions being impeded by the growth of unwanted plants like Himalayan balsam and Japanese knotweed. They slow the water down as it flows down the river. That adds to the problem of, of flooding. Infrastructure, um, railways, roads, uh, a lot of these plants are undesirable uh, in terms of directly interfering with assets and, and problems that these industries have, but also indirectly. So with a, a railway line, a, a road route, inevitably passing by yeah. other properties, they have a blighting effect on those properties. So it could be quite difficult to get a mortgage if at the bottom of your garden on the other side of the fence or growing through your fence, you've got Japanese knotweed. A particular problem with plants like Japanese knotweed and giant hogweed is where they grow on the neighbour's land. And already we've seen a number of, of, of cases where landowners have been challenged uh, legally in terms of making good loss of value, um, problems of getting a mortgage and so on. And this involves a sort of range of, of, of landowners, Network Whale, the property industry, it could be your next door neighbour. These government has now introduced community protection notices and control orders uh, and these will have an, an impact on again a, a wide variety of, of landowners. In order to respond to the challenge of all these plants and the difficulties that they cause it's really important to work together. The Invasive Weed Control Group is particularly well placed to develop a, a reliable professional response to the problems caused by all these different sorts of, uh, of invasive plants. Fundamentally, it relies on setting standards, really. I think that's how I'd explain it. Uh, and the basis of that is our code of practice, which lays out how we expect our members to respond to dealing with Japanese knotweed or whatever the plant is. So that's a really good starting point. We then have the criteria that our members need to meet in order to demonstrate that they are delivering the code of practice. That could be anything from health and safety standards, their financial viability as a company, all the way through to uh, having uh, taken the exams that are necessary in order to, uh, for their staff to be demonstrably able to deal with these, these situations. That um, is backed up by training and also supporting information, technical notes, guidance notes, uh, to help you deal with these, these plants. And part of that also is the organisation annually of the Invasive Weed Control Conference. Uh, this is together both national and international experts dealing with uh, invasive weeds. 
brings everybody up to date, gives a good opportunity to exchange ideas uh, and again overall raising our standards. Linked to that are the awards that the Property Care Association um, gives out uh, again on an annual basis uh, for good practice and this uh, also covers the Invasive Weed Control Group as well as other aspects of, of the PCA and it recognises technical proficiency in the work that uh, the, the members do uh, and the good services that they provide. What the Property Care Association has done is to um, set the standards and to uphold the standards. That's key to, to its uh, role and, and the role of its members. You can see the list of plants that we need to deal with is growing the range of legislation that we have to respond to is growing. So uh, a real challenge uh, and one that the PCA uh, is, is very well positioned to ensure that we achieve more and maintain our standards into the future. For more details about the Property Care Association's Invasive Weed Control Group, please visit our website.